Welcome back to another video and thanks so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. Previously on Villains Too Stupid To Win, we saw the bizarre personality cults of the Smokers and Immortan Joe, the raging god complexes of M. Bison, Lex Luthor and Syndrome and the half ass religious appropriation of Late Stage Umbrella. Now Media Zealot presents some of the most profound zealots in all of media. It's the Church of Unitology from the Dead Space series. In a dark dystopian future, a technologically advanced humanity has colonized the stars. While still failing to overcome the usual issues of overpopulation, pollution, climate change and resource shortages. But not to worry, these humans have got a big band-aid solution. Cracking open planets and harvesting all the goodies within, including moons in our very own solar system. I'm sure that will solve everything. Predictably, they make the mistake of busting open the wrong planet, exposing an alien artifact which in turn turn unleashes mutant space zombies, the necromorphs. Offering a corrupted, twisted version of humanity, they could almost be viewed as a punishment or a galactic immune response to humanity's greatest defilement of nature. Yep, as is typical in many creature features, we're the real monsters. No way! Although the megacorps of this universe bear some blame for the situation, this time our big bads are a few nefarious governmental bodies, and most monstrous of all, our religious whack job villains, the Church of Unitology. In a similar manner to Wayland Dutani Corp, these guys are obsessed with chasing down aliens so dangerous they represent a truly existential threat. Except unlike Wei Yu, the church doesn't even have the profit motive to justify their pursuits, though they're definitely partial to grifting money from their followers to cover their day-to-day -day expenses. Which brings us to the church's apparent real-life inspiration, a kooky alien cult, sorry, religion, that also ends in tology. Except Unitology is far more successful, enjoying widespread acceptance, a greater following, and their beliefs actually have a real, yet somewhat flimsy, basis in their reality. Unlike Xenu, just don't ask the game makers about any of this, or they'll be forced to deny there's any link. Also worth noting, Scientology are in the habit of suing anyone who gives them lip. Other inspirations you may pick up on in the Dead Space series, there's obviously a few similarities to the Alien universe, nods to classic sci-fi authors. The Necromorphs have shades of The Thing and The Flood from Halo, and we've even got a few malevolent monoliths lying around. And just like in 2001 A Space Odyssey, these things make the local apes go absolutely ballistic. Point 1. The Church's beliefs are as flexible as they are illogical. When we first encounter the church in Dead Space 1, they operate a powerful, wealthy, yet secretive organization, boasting a following in the millions and with members occupying influential positions across all of human space. An established centuries-old religion recognized as the largest modern belief system and the fastest growing religion in all of human history. The church has succeeded in filling a spiritual void in a cold humanist society in a galaxy otherwise devoid of life and meaning. The only planets we ever found in all of space are dead. Earth was a fluke. Appropriating many aspects from traditional religions, on the surface level the church seems fairly innocuous. Seducing their adherents with the promise of salvation, everlasting life and rebirth through an ambiguous apocalypse-like event called convergence, which will supposedly unite humanity in mind, body and purpose. Such fables are necessary only in cultures which unduly emphasize emotional behavior. The church believing themselves ordained to prepare humanity for this eventuation, even somewhat embracing science as a necessary means of achieving their goals. They're essentially satanic Buddhists who hide behind a veneer of pseudo-scientific quasi-Christian respectability. While we can give the low-level believers a bit of a pass for being sucked in by the church's vague benevolent messaging, the higher we go up in the church's hierarchy, the less we can excuse their beliefs, as they should be privy to information that reveals the church harbors motivations far darker than their public image suggests. They're knowingly pursuing goals which could result in the extinction of humanity justified by their erroneous interpretations of historical events. When it comes down to it, the church is basically a nihilistic death cult. 
the surface level unitology mythos is based on the Marker, an alien monolith which modern believers revere as both alien and divine, an ideological basis which is obviously a massive contradiction. What a bunch of unitologists bullshit. Discovered on Earth almost 300 years ago by the church's messiah and martyr Michael Altman, an anthropologist or geophysicist depending on who you ask, who supposedly sought to bring the revelations and benefits of the Marker to the wider public, but was killed by the government who wanted to keep it for themselves, or so the church claims. Little is known publicly about the attributes of the original marker and the events around it, other than it was found in the crater at Yucatan Peninsula. This circumstantial evidence serving to bolster the church's belief that the marker assisted in the development of humanity, rather than the more obvious conclusion that this thing probably helped wipe out the dinosaurs. But after a red marker was discovered on Aegis 7, we learn the horrifying truth. The markers transmit a signal that not only drives many people to madness but gives rise to an infection which causes dead flesh to resurrect, recombining and morphing the human form into deadly creatures called the necromorphs who share a hive mind emitted by the marker. These murderous monsters kill every life form they encounter, spreading the infection as far as the signal will allow. Though this does share some token similarities to the church's teachings, this is definitely not the convergence that anyone was sold. But that won't stop some of the church's senior members from continuing to believe in the promises of unitology, twisting the church's teachings to rationalize their uncomfortable new reality. I believe you are having a typically human response to circumstances which are frightening and inexplicable. Benjamin Mathias, captain of the Ishimura and a devout unitologist, continues to believe in the teachings of the church long after it becomes apparent the marker, its signal and the necromorph infestation are related. Whatever was on the planet has made it aboard ship, and it's somehow connected to the marker. Another uni, Dr. Chalice Mercer, takes it to the next level, fully embracing these hellish necromorphs as the awaited convergence, eventually even offering himself up for infection. In Dead Space 2, we're betrayed by Dana Le Guin, a high-ranking rock worshipper, who also views a necromorph outbreak as the beginnings of convergence. And throughout all Dead Space content, we encounter many other unis who are more than willing to kill themselves and embrace what they believe to be convergence. And let's not get started on this Danik guy and his mental gymnastics. This jerk deserves his own section. The excuse offered to unis who are within range of the marker signal is they have fallen under its influence and effectively lost their free will, driving them to madness, fanaticism, and pushing them towards courses of action which will further the marker's mysterious alien agenda. So if we were gonna be nice, we could say the exposed unis aren't really responsible for their actions. Though that might technically be true, they're still inherently stupid, and I can prove it. The marker's influence can be resisted, even by unitologists, as was the case with Dr. Terence Kine and a few other unis who ended up renouncing their faith in the face of the truth. Unitology is a lie. That is the mechanism of control, the lies that brought us here under false pretenses. Eventually, we also discover the marker has a different effect on intelligent people, who are more able to resist madness and cope with the marker's influence. In their case, the marker initiates strategies which are designed to deceive them into furthering its goals, often inspiring them to create more markers rather than becoming direct puppets to its agenda like the simpler unitologists. So as established by in-universe rules for the unitologists, Unitologists who go batshit insane, become more fanatical, kill themselves, or do anything to directly assist the marker, being somewhat dumb is an essential prerequisite. The apparent lack of brain power in Unitology's ranks confirmed by their own internal indoctrination guidelines, which suggests smarter, more self-assured people are unlikely to make good Unitologists. When it comes to speculating about the marker's origins and intentions, any rational, intelligent person would look at the marker and the necromorphs and come to the conclusion that this thing is probably an alien superweapon, a galactic apex predator, or a plague. We are merely following a line of deductive reasoning. Killing everything in its path, adding to itself at the expense of other life forms, and adapting the environment to suit itself. This is quite obviously some sort of competitor to humanity. Definitely not an organism interested in a symbiotic relationship, let alone something to be worshipped. But the church would have us bow down to this malevolent force without so much as flinging a plasma bolt. This phaser is on wide beam dispersal and set to kill. And so it's not surprising the church's beliefs become even more illogical once we shine a light on their murky origins and demystify the events around the original marker.
Point two, the church is built on a foundation of lies and conjecture. Later unitologists work against the church's original goals. As we discover in the novel Dead Space Martyr, the founders of Unitology were a couple of government officials, Craig Markoff and Stevens, who witnessed the effects of the marker for themselves. Although it may have properties that appear supernatural, as Altman and some other scientists determined, it's not unlike a device quite obviously grounded in science. Altman himself was big enough to admit he didn't know the ultimate function of the marker, but it's safe to say Markoff is way off the mark coming to their logical conclusion that this thing is divine and benevolent in nature and was simply not functioning as intended. The marker's ability to reanimate dead tissue serving as the entire basis for their belief it created humanity and can grant eternal life. And they came to these beliefs without any good evidence to back up any of these positions. You are making wild assumptions. It's pure conjecture that has served as the fundamental cornerstone of unitology ever since. Who knows what the unitologists managed to fill all these books with, it won't be compelling evidence that's for sure. Taking advantage of the societal instability and strife that existed at the time, Markov and co decided to found a religion based on their fabricated interpretations of the marker, vowing to use a reluctant Michael Altman as their figurehead before assassinating him themselves. They also took all of the existing research on the marker, including necromorph specimens, and stated their intention to build more markers, something very possible considering the depth of the available knowledge. If unitology was founded on the basis of bilking people out of money, it'd still be wrong, but at least I could understand it. Instead, Markov seems to actually buy into his own bullshit. He did eventually get the church off the ground, and in doing so created an indelible marker stain on the very culture of humanity. Humanity, yet building one is something that seems completely beyond the church. Though it's safe to assume this may be related to their established deficit of smart people. Over the course of the Dead Space series, EarthGov and their predecessor the Sovereign Colonies Administration builds their own fully functional markers and develops a far more intimate understanding of them than the church ever achieves. Despite the church's knowledge of the original marker, implied access to the red marker, a vast network of powerful believers and later a dedicated military force and fleet. The unitologists not only failed to ever build or acquire their own marker, they also failed to learn anything new about the marker at all. It leaves me wondering what these guys have been doing for 200 years. Dr. Terence Kine is the church's supposed expert on the marker, yet when he finally encounters one for himself, he appears to know almost nothing about its properties, far less than Markov and co already knew. And if the church intentionally withheld information from him, then why would they send him on such an important mission. Terence was a massive liability in more ways than one. Almost all unitologists we encounter know nothing about the marker that isn't publicly available information, and the few that do manage to glean a few insights either died before they could pass on their findings to the church, or they merely uncovered some superficial information about the government marker programs. For whatever reason, it appears the founders failed to pass on the most fundamental objectives of the church or the original marker research, leading later believers to go against their original intentions and embrace the necromorphs as a convergence event which is an idea they didn't support. The founders also failed to get whatever was left of the original black marker before the sovereign colonies dredged it up. I would have thought that would have been a priority. In Dead Space 2, the higher ups of the church are finally attempting to build their own marker, accidentally pursuing the original goal of the founders. Better late than never I suppose. Well, that's why we brought you here, to build markers for us. You know what would have really helped that along? The original data from the black marker. Where did all that good stuff go? So guys, don't be slack with your important data like these unitologists. Keep your information secure with Surfshark. A virtual private network encrypts your data, keeping you anonymous and protecting all of your information, files and passwords while online. Whether you're using a PC, laptop, tablet or smartphone, a VPN is quite simply the best way to keep yourself secure while on the internet. If you're a regular user of public Wi-Fi, having that extra layer of security is practically a must. Surfshark VPN also comes with a range of other features, including the ability to block cookies and no one 
scam websites. You can even bypass internet censorship and geographical restrictions. Prepare to have your mind blown by the number of new viewing options on Netflix. Also worth noting, with just one account, you can use Surfshark VPN on an unlimited number of devices. And all of this for a very modest price. So head down to the video description and check it out. Use promo code Zalot and for a limited time, you'll receive a ludicrous 83% off. Three months extra for free and a 30 day money back guarantee. So click that link, check out the deal and keep your browsing secure with Surfshark. Fast forward to Dead Space 3, Danik and his new ruling faction of the church known as the Circle decides man-made markers are malfunctioning abominations and any type of marker experimentation is heresy. If anyone would have access to the church's most secret information, it would surely be this guy. He's recycled the founders a logical rationalization for the horror caused by the original black marker, but now he's unwittingly used it to go against their wishes. For a church so fixated on convergence, these units sure have some divergent ideologies. This lack of internal consistency being one of many problems in a litany of disastrous errors the followers of Unitology are guilty of. Point 3. The church's activities doom all of humanity and themselves. So let's join the church on their quest to do something with the marker. Let's be honest, at this stage they wouldn't know what to do with a marker even if they found one. Finally getting wind of the red marker on Aegis 7, discovered after the Concordance Extraction Corporation set up an illegal mining colony, at which point the resident unis contacted the church to deliver the supposedly good news. So the church pulled some strings, filling the crew of the Ishimura with a huge whack of unitologists, including the captain and the chief science officer, who, under the guise of a planet cracking run, were tasked with the secret mission of retrieving the marker and bringing it back to Earth. Maybe at least study the thing first, see what the actual deal is. We've already established the church knows next to nothing about this thing. Meanwhile, in the Dead Space comic series, the unitologists of the Aegis 7 mining colony kick off a necromorph infestation by killing themselves en masse. The beginning of a self-defeating trend. Although suicide may assist the marker in the short term, it doesn't do much to help the church or the marker in the long run, since it clears the way for our good guys to control and influence the course of events without substantial human opposition. Once Captain Matthias arrives, he ignores the situation on the planet's surface, bringing the marker aboard the Ishimura. He then refuses to send a distress signal for the sake of keeping the marker and the illegal mining colony secret, and it appears he even sabotaged the Ishimura's communications array, making it impossible to call for help or even apprise the church of the situation, which was pretty much the only shot the church has ever had of actually learning something new about the marker. Because you just know none of these people are getting out of this alive. Luckily Matthias is killed before he can send the necromorph infested Ishimura back to earth. But before we move on, did anyone else notice this guy's similarities to another crazed commander? Captain Murphy from Sea Lab. That can't be a coincidence. It's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on the scene, it's our main boy, Isaac. He's not a space marine or a combat veteran, but an engineer turned exterminator. Or is it Butcher? The perfect man for a cutting job and the perfect rationalist antidote to the church's unhinged theism. The battle between between reason and belief, most obvious in Isaac's relationship with his mother, a devout unitologist who gave away all their family's money to the church, forcing Isaac to attend a less than prestigious engineering school. So finally Isaac can take sweet revenge against the church and their phony claims about unification and convergence. And he'll destroy them even if he has to dismember them one limb at a time. As Isaac makes his way through the Ishimura, he eventually encounters Mercer, who is so convinced of the necromancer morphs divinity, he sets out to make them even stronger than they already were. Wait, so why do these gods need our help? Your question is based on a faulty assumption. I cannot answer it. He also has grand plans to release necromorphs on Earth. Thankfully, he's also impatient and insane, throwing his life away before he can accomplish his pie-in-the-sky schemes. Though he does manage to create these annoyingly unkillable bastards. Seriously, screw those guys. I only wish I could have denied Mercer the pleasure of becoming a necromorph. 
So with Mercer out of the way and only monsters left to stand against Isaac, we eventually get the marker back down to Aegis 7 and blow the whole place to hell, before he wakes up on Titan Station in Dead Space 2 in the midst of another Necromorph outbreak. Poor Isaac just can't catch a break. This time, the marker was created by EarthGov using a mental blueprint from Isaac's mind, but the outbreak itself was caused by our favourite lunatics, the Church, seeing the Necromorphs as a means of kicking off convergence, but also as a cover so they could scoop up Isaac. A weird trade-off considering they've doomed the entire sprawl and everyone who lives there, which was formerly one of the church's greatest strongholds. That doesn't seem like a great way of advancing your cause. Shit gets even more apocalyptic in Dead Space 3, brought to you by Wacko Danik, a self-proclaimed man of science who is so profoundly deluded and so plagued by logical inconsistencies he makes all other unis who came before him seem positively rational. And just like any good stupid villain, Danik has convinced himself he's a misunderstood hero. I've spent an entire lifetime trying to undo the damage man has done. Danik prefers a more active approach than his unseen predecessors, presiding over a fanatical sect of militarized unitologists so utterly brainwashed they've devolved into suicide bombers, resolving to kill Isaac for his marker-destroying capabilities. But Isaac only destroyed the supposed man-made abomination, so really Danik should be pinning a medal on this guy. Unbeknownst to Danik, he's also depriving himself of a chance to achieve the Founder's wishes, Isaac being a proven source of information when it comes to building markers. It sure doesn't seem like Danik wants to kill Isaac though, assuming his death when he falls from a modest height, leaving him unconscious on a garbage pile. He didn't even need to go down there it was so close, he could have just fired a few shots into Isaac from where he was standing. This is not a great start. Danik carries out an ambitious campaign, sabotaging a whole bunch of secret marker labs that EarthGov had set up on every major settlement in human space, unleashing the marker signals and starting widespread necromorph outbreaks as a step towards convergence, which doesn't really make a lick of sense when you consider he also views man-made markers as malfunctioning abominations. That is the most illogical line of reasoning. Danik and his crew weave so much chaos they even manage to overthrow EarthGov or at the very least greatly diminish their power. And the reason for this huge upheaval? Danik has his bullshit reasons. But it was essentially a petty act of revenge against an administration that was increasingly uniphobic. Attacks which leave all of humanity extremely vulnerable. But then again, Danik seems to actually want to kill us all. Squandering their one and only chance to claim lordship over the human race, Danik doesn't offer any sort of viable political alternative. Instead, he follows Isaac to tell Volantis, the apparent source of the local marker signals. As Isaac slices his way through the necromorph hordes on the surface and the unis, who are helping him along by killing themselves when they were meant to be hunting him down, we slowly discover discover the Sovereign Colony's administration covered up some pretty notable marker discoveries here. It turns out Talvolantis was the homeworld of an alien civilization that fell under the influence of their own black marker, leading them to construct so many red markers they triggered a convergence event. This resulted in the planet's entire biomass being sucked into orbit, forming a moon-sized necromorph mass known as a Brethren Moon, the final necromorph form and seemingly the ultimate intelligence behind the markers. These moons are presumably constructing the black markers and firing them out across the galaxy. Though I guess it is still possible this is all just a sickening remnant of an ancient alien super weapon. Or is it the result of some natural evolutionary process? Before this new moon could connect with the greater Brethren moon network, the aliens built a machine which literally froze the convergence event in place, sacrificing themselves for the sake of saving any other life in this part of the galaxy. This also contained the local marker network to our neck of the woods, shielding Earth from detection by the Brethren Moons when we mucked around with our own markers much later. These revelations also suggest that perhaps the Church and the original founders were half right about one thing. The marker on Earth may have been influencing humanity to build up its biomass and spread throughout the galaxy, but not for some benevolent purpose like the Church suggests, but rather the fattening up of the prey for a better harvest later. The Brethren Moons seemingly responsible for our galaxy being devoid of of other life forms. So as was obvious to anyone who had ever seen a necromorph, the ultimate power behind the marker was never well intentioned. They seemed to exist with the sole
sole purpose of killing and repurposing all organic life and expanding its own consciousness. Though some with a morbid interpretation of the church's mission might claim they were right all along, there isn't a scrap of evidence that the human consciousness persists. This is a parasitic relationship, but of course Danik isn't going to have a bar of any of this, fancying himself smarter than not only the entire human race but an advanced alien civilization as well. He decides the aliens were also tampering with the markers and denying themselves convergence, this time by way of their machine. It's not only mankind's tampering which has hindered our glorious rebirth, but this alien machine as well. It's unclear whether Danik has now embraced the red markers, but I can't see how anything has changed. These things are still creating monsters, so this convergence still doesn't seem like anything worth chasing. To be honest, at this stage, his rhetoric is so confused, it's hard to figure out what he actually believes. Wait until his own illogic overwhelms him. But you just know, if there's a big switch around, this guy can't help but flick it. So inevitably, Danik puts the entire human race at risk by shutting down the alien machine. Finally achieving the long sought after convergence. If converging himself with a shard of rock was what that was meant to mean, I doubt his body is even intact enough to serve as a necromorph. Does any of this resemble victory? Did the possibility of retreat not occur to you? Though Isaac and co managed to reactivate the alien machine and use it to destroy this particular brethren moon. As we discover in Dead Space Awakened, it wasn't enough to stop the signal reaching the other moon bros, who are apparently now aware of Earth after linking in to the local marker network. With Danik out of the picture, along with any semblance of unitologist leadership, the church devolves into its final gruesome form. Fully embracing the necromorphs and the brethren moons as gods, they only seek to serve humanity to them on a platter, which won't be too hard considering once Isaac and Carver make it back to Earth, the moons appear to have beat them to it. Apparently these things also have warp speed. With humanity seemingly doomed and not in any position to mount a defense, we can pretty much blame all of this on Danik and his insane uni crew. Thanks guys. It is possible Isaac and co were just hallucinating, but at this point I'm not giving Danik a pass on anything. However, I will concede that if anyone won, it was probably these sickos. Though they're so far removed from the original church, I don't even know if we can call them unitologists. So we end with the unitologists being responsible for not only their own destruction, but the destruction of humanity and perhaps the destruction of the very notion that humans were ever an intelligent species. But with a dead space reboot on the horizon, it would appear this space is anything but dead. And so it seems likely we haven't seen the last of the church of unitology.